Hello everybody, today I want to explain a little bit what drifting is, how it works and how you can use the handbrake to help you go even more sideways in certain situations. I've actually done drifting for a number of minutes, so everybody considers me an expert. So these cones that you see here that are no longer standing up vertical, it's definitely not by accident. So what are the absolute basics of drifting? Well, in order to go sideways, we want the rear tires to have less grip than the front tires and then the car will rotate. And then it's a matter of balancing with the throttle, handbrake, steering, controlling that angle. So the trick is to suddenly let go of the rear grip, which you can do in various ways. One thing that I will demonstrate now is a clutch kick. So we press the clutch, we have a lot of throttle and then boom, we release the clutch, suddenly makes the rear tire spin and we go sideways. So let me demonstrate that for you. We're going very slow, clutch in, lots of throttle. Suddenly it makes the car go sideways. If you have a lot of power, and we do have it in this car, you can also just use a lot of throttle and the car will come. It's not as suddenly, enter the turn, full throttle, and, and with this much power it almost went instantly. Depends on how much power you have. It is less abrupt and a different way to go sideways. So one more time, no need for a clutch, we're not clutch kicking. We're going slowly and we want to go sideways, full throttle. And there we go. Big V8, easy in this car, not in all cars. But using the throttle or a clutch kick also drives the car forward. And sometimes you already have a lot of speed and you want to take some speed off, but still enter the corner sideways. And that's where the handbrake comes in. If you have a bit too much speed, you don't want to use extra throttle because you want to go too fast and probably not make your drift. So let's see if we can arrive a little bit too fast. Clutch in, handbrake. And then with throttle, we keep it going. That wasn't great. Let's do that again. We're a little bit too fast. Clutch in, handbrake. Let's see if you can do it again. Clutch in, handbrake. Oh, no, not, not super clean. Clutch in, handbrake. Oh, I'm still fast. One more time. Clutch in, handbrake. In that situation it's really hard to do it with throttle because we're already going pretty fast so we need a lot of power or a clutch kick is a little abrupt it might work a handbrake is a safe way to lose some speed and go sideways and it's a valuable aid to have when you're drifting in a simulator to have even more control and it's also realistic in real life the drifters often have a handbrake because it's just one of their tools in their toolbox to go as sideways as spectacular as possible and it's up to the driver to decide, do you have to increase the speed or remove some speed? What tools do I use? My steering wheel, my pedals, or as well the handbrake. It's a very valuable tool. A handbrake, of course, or Heusigfeld handbrake, has a load cell in it, so it responds to your, the force with which you pull. You can use smart control to have a higher force, a lower force, even a different response curve. And it may seem like I'm just pulling it as if it's a button, and that can work, but the ultimate key, as I try to do the stare and drift, is the control and the smoothness. The best drifters are so smooth, it almost looks effortless. And if you yank the handbrake super hard, you get a sudden loss of grip, and maybe you want to pull it a little bit more gently. It all depends on the situation, how you want to enter the turn. It can be valuable to have that fine control and with our handbrake, you can set any force you want. And it's up to you, as I actually execute a nice handbrake turn, to pull it abruptly or smoothly, or, which I can try and demonstrate now, if we have a lot of speed, you can also control the stability of the rear of the car. So let's see if we can find somewhere we are, where we are a little bit faster. While we find the perfect corner for that, Four c back is a very important part of drifting in a simulator. In real life, the opposite lock, the counter steering, is almost done automatically by the car itself. And in the simulator, this can also happen, depending on the sim and your settings. So it takes a lot of tweaking of your, hopefully it works the best with a direct drive setup, the damping, the inertia, you want to have the wheel very responsive, but not overly responsive. So 
expect to do a bit of tweaking. So the force feedback helps you catch the slides. You don't have to do it manually and it is nice and controlled. I control the wheel spin on the back if the tires are fully locked or slightly locked. Especially if you go at really high speed into a turn, you can use that handbrake, that instability of the car without being super abrupt to set the car up, make it unstable and it can assist you in the entry as well. Let's see if we can do that here. So here, see if we can scrub up some speed. See, I went sideways, but really quite gradual. And if I just pulled it really hard, that would not have worked. So fine control over your handbrake force. It's not just a button. If you learn how to modulate it, you can use it to set the car up sideways, even if it's a more smooth application and it takes longer for the car to go sideways. So it's a fine instrument that you can control with your hand and it's really delicate, a way to make your drifting even, even better, even more spectacular, even more sideways. So that was a short explanation about drifting. Of course, this was perfectly clear, but just in case you have any questions, of course, you, you might have them. Feel free to post them below and we'll do our best to, uh, to give you the smartest answer we can.